Hello everyone, it's Kirsten here. Today I want to try to tell you guys my tips on how I think you can go about improving quickly or how you can approach your technique and just the way that you are doing your ballet training in order to advance quicker than you were you would if you um, you know just worked really hard I want to give these points to you to hopefully encourage you to work smart not just hard and this involves getting your thought process in the game not just working your body sweating a lot taking as many classes as possible though those things are valuable what is actually going to get you on the fast track to reaching your potential as a dancer is if you are more critical about the process you know if you involve your critical thinking skills um, to examine your technique and see how you can go about it in a way that'll just really help you see more immediate isn't a good word but um, success in a shorter time frame so the first thing I think you should do is make a list of your strengths and weaknesses. Try to be really objective about it. Don't be self-deprecating and say, I don't have any strengths. If you really don't think you have some really obvious strengths at this point in your dance journey, identify your, your biggest areas of potential for having standout qualities. I, I hope this makes sense. Like. If you think, hmm, I really enjoy using my arms and my upper body, that's what I like to do. My arms aren't perfect, but I think one day that could be my strength. Put something like that. So if it's a little bit too much for you to identify your strengths, because as dancers, we are very critical of ourselves. I'm sure it's easy for every one of you watching to come up with a whole list of things you're not good at. But um, really do try to acknowledge your strengths or areas for uh, or of potential so that you have something to work with and you could see how to construct your game plan from there. Another tip I have is to try filming yourself dancing as much as possible, especially if you could just put your little phone, your camera in the room after class and just practice some basic things from technique class. That will really help you see from just another angle what's going on with your technique so you can hopefully appreciate some things of what you're doing and then also say hmm I see what my teachers are saying about this and um, take so watch a video try to not be too hard on yourself uh, because that does not lead to progress believe me and um, from there combine what you see um, with what your teachers are saying and then start to compile a list of goals um, short-term long-term goals um, as in short-term so you can say this week in class I'm going to tackle this issue I'm going to really focus on not tipping my pelvis forward when I'm trying to stand in a turned out position or I'm going to focus on lengthening my arms in arabesque instead of having short weak arms um, those are good short-term goals uh, the one on placement is a good long-term goal as well. And then for long-term goals, those can be a little bit more, um, I guess those are going to be the things that obviously take more time. Uh, for instance, if you say my long-term goal within the next three months is to get my arabesque above 90 degrees, that's a really good uh, longer-term goal. Um, and for me personally, I have even longer term goals than that, but those are more career oriented. Um, and we're just talking about gaining strength and technique and improving in that sense as a dancer. So anyway, but I think goals are super important. So do that. And as far as using your critical thinking skills, one thing that um, really works is to not just think of taking class and getting the, you know, hardest workout pushing yourself as hard as you can that leads to overuse injuries a lot of the time and it's really fantastic to work hard but as you get older you're gonna have to learn to work efficiently and use just enough energy uh, to accomplish what you want to do um, so that you can you know preserve yourself for whatever else you have to do throughout the day um, so yes, work hard, but realize that it is more important to be really investigative with your work in technique class. Get your head in the game, like I was saying. So um, 
I want you to, at the beginning of this especially, just be really aware of what your body is doing in class. Um, are you falling a certain direction out of your balances? Are you always coming down early out of your double pirouettes? Are you unable to balance even in tendus and center? Take those things, don't just give up on them and say, oh, well, I'm, I've never been good at that, you know. That always happens, I'll be better one day. What will get you better sooner is if you say, hmm, I'm going to acknowledge that I'm falling forward out of my balances, so I'm going to fix that. You know, the first step is awareness, and then the next step is to ask yourself, why is this happening? And that's gonna help you tackle it. So if you say, hmm, okay, I'm falling forward out of my balances, uh, and you ask yourself why, maybe look in the mirror, and if that doesn't work, um, practice in your alignment. Again, the balance, and just be really introspective and feel what your body is doing. Is your head tipping too far forward? Is your back weak so you're you're not able to hold your back up and like an arabesque attitude balance or something like that? Um, ask yourself why it's happening so then you can tackle that specific issue and once you uh, get a hold of what the specific things are that's messing up your balance, that's what's gonna help you improve rather than saying, okay, well, I'm falling forward, so I'm just gonna try and not do that, or go backwards. Sometimes that approach works, sometimes it's just that cut and dry, but a lot of times you do have to um, ask yourself those questions and take um, time alone, you know, after class to work on that kind of stuff. So approach class in that way. Don't just say, oh, I fell out of a pirouette. Say, why did I fall out of a pirouette? Dance really consciously when you're in class and, um, even before you feel like you might make a mistake in a combination, have this resolve that you are not going to. And you're going to hold a balance or you're going to get your leg up to a certain height. And that mentality makes your body actually fight to do those things. And it creates this um, like resilience and this adaptability in your body, this muscle memory that gets the work done rather than having an attitude of like, oh, I'm just gonna see what happens and then afterwards ask myself, why did that happen? You know, so you wanna go into it pushing yourself um, mentally as hard as you can to say, no, I'm going to do these things, I'm not going to mess it up and blah, blah, blah. And then if things do happen, then you ask yourself why. And I find this is the most productive way to take class. Another thing is to wear your point shoes as much as you can in class. That is, if you are at the age where you do point work, and if you're a woman. Um, so this really helps to build strength. It's pretty obvious. Um, not just doing point classes, but having your shoes on in technique class, even at bar, is really, really important because that actually emulates a little bit more um, of what you will do on stage, you know, the normal kind of dancey stuff. A lot of times you don't get into class or on stage and do like a ton of consecutive releves unless you're doing a soloist part or 32A chapeys. Like you just don't do that stuff. That is usually in a point class. Point classes are typically very exercise oriented. They're not like dancey, usually. I mean, I'm not going to speak for everyone's experience, but. That's the industry norm. Uh, so it's important to get your shoes on in different contexts and just wear them as much as possible so that you can just naturally build strength just by practice. Another thing is to cross train. This is pretty obvious. And um, I've done a video on why I like hot yoga, but I, I need to talk about Pilates reformer classes. I think that is my new favorite thing. Um, but find a method of cross training that works for you, whether that be mat Pilates, reformer Pilates, normal yoga, hot yoga, um, fast paced walks, uh, like you could do weight training, cardio, whatever works for you, find something outside of the studio that you can also do to supplement your strength training. Another tip I have, and I think this will be my last one, um, is probably something you already have done. Uh, it's just to go on YouTube and find as many videos of professionals dancing and note what they're doing well. Now, I want you to specifically not pay too much attention to things that are superficial, like um, their natural facility, you know, like don't focus so much on what their feet look like or their bodies, you know. Focus on 
um, try to pick up what they're doing artistically with their choices in their technique and in their artistry because there are choices there, you know, in their dynamics, um, things like that. And find inspiration that way and try to uh, take some of what they do um, and apply that to your classwork. For me, I remember when I watched um, Houston Ballet for one of the first times, I went to see a live show and I, I thought, wow. I have never noticed um, how much clarity in your technique matters. So I would watch them and I just noticed that every move was so like pristine and um, nothing was kind of like jumbled together. There was, there was no like, as if each um, step they were doing was a word and it was perfectly articulated. Um, it was just really, really incredible for me to see, and it's hard to explain, but um, just, I was so struck by the clarity they had in their technique. There was no, no sloppiness whatsoever. Um, I, because I've seen a lot of incredible dancers who are able to make beautiful shapes, but their in-between steps are kind of hard to pick up on. Like, it just doesn't really register because they don't make it really, really um, obvious what they're trying to do, you know. Um, so anyway, that's just something I remember picking up on and um, it's a nice fun way to get inspired as well. So try to look at people who inspire you and um, take some of what works for them and try and make it work for you. Uh, and with that, I think I could keep going. There are tons of ways to improve, but those are some of the most important in my opinion. And um, if you have any more questions, please let me know. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Also, I've never mentioned this on my channel, but I notice it's a trend now on YouTube to tell subscribers to click the little bell notification button. So maybe click that if you wanna see my videos consistently because they might not be popping up in your subscription boxes if you don't click that button. I don't know, maybe just try it. Um, and give this video a like if you found it helpful. Uh, so anyway, that's enough of that. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.